Okay, so I, I mean, I think that um, you have to step back a little bit. India doesn't have a jobs problem. We have a wages problem is, is the primary thesis. If you accept that, then um, one or the other, then you go down different paths, right? Because if you think India has a jobs problem, you'll throw money from helicopters, you'll mandate a three-day work week, you'll take away people's tractors and give them spoons. But I don't think we have a jobs problem. India's sort of um, unemployment has stayed between 5 and 10% since uh, 5 and 9% since 1947. So obviously that has and reconciled with a 30, 35, 40% poverty rate. So I think that the lowest hanging fruit in labor markets is matching, you know, so the first Nobel Prize went to Peter Diamond uh, for his work on search costs in labor markets in this area. But the more interesting Nobel Prize went to Shapley and Roth, who said that, well, equity markets clear on price, but labor markets clear on information. So I think that the way that you set up digital markets is not purely to clear on price because the primary variable is not gross salary or net salary. It is which location are you in? How much are you willing to commute? What skills do you have? What can you do? And so if pure matching platforms so would have solved this problem, then Nokri and Monster would, not, would have solved this problem. And that's why I think digital platforms, which do much more than purely matching, are the future of, of sort of thinking about the these kinds of um, engagements. Um, so uh, platforms like um, yours improve, or at least Ola improve productivity. They improve um, the matching, which is the lowest, but they also improve um, capacity utilization. They also connect you to the market. They also connect you. See, see, India's problem is too many enterprises with low productivity and not enough skills. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. I mean. Um, not all entrepreneurship is viable, not all, not everybody has the skills, but people can be entrepreneurs on platforms which provide them with the capabilities of matching or of capacity utilization or of connecting to the market or even skill development. I, I think many of the repeat sort of people on your platforms are going undergoing what I call an apprenticeship program on steroids. And so I think that um, digital platforms are part of the solution to the future of work. I think that, uh, you know, it's very hard to predict the future, but you can make yourself worthy of the future. And India has many problems. We are inadequately formalized, urbanized, industrialized, financialized, and skilled. But, so we have, we need 10 solutions on moving 200 million people off farms. We need 10 solutions for increasing the number of cities we have with more than a million people. We need 10 solutions for raising our credit to GDP ratio from 50% to 100%. So I, I think that thinking about the problem holistically will, will make us recognize that the digitization super cycle which COVID has set off, I mean, it's a mandatory digital literacy program for the planet, will obviously manifest itself in various ways in specific areas like e-learning or in um, e-commerce. But more importantly, they make they change the nature of work. They change the nature of education. They change the nature of organizations. So I think it's really important for us to think about the future of work and organizations very differently than we have thought. Now, there's no magic bullet here, but clearly there is a, a, a realization that we will um, be going um, into work, into organizations and into the future very differently than we have in the past. I think you have to fight the battle for ideas. I'm not, I don't know what you're supposed to do. I, I think you have to fight the battle for ideas. You have to make the case. You have to prove to people you'll change in a democracy. Democ in India is not like China. And so while um, the digital platforms in China, whether in financial services or many things, have seen much deeper, broader, faster and wider adoption than India, but they also don't are not very competitive markets. So I think India had the say, for example, the progress that we have made in payments. We had set out a, a target of a billion payments a month. UPI reached that in January. Now we've set ourselves a target of a billion payments a day. But we will get there over time. And I think that the credibility of the system, the kind of players who are playing in it, the promises that you make, please keep them. So I think that I, taking the long view would be the best thing that you can do. You know, there is an inevitable digitization of the world. There is an inevitable software eating the physical sort of um, hardware. But um, 
society we don't live in an economy we live in a society and societies change at slower paces than an economy so i think that to establish credibility to establish change to make the case for advoc- to, to advocate for change not only requires persistence courage and money and time but it also requires patience um so i would submit that you know pouring more water over a plant doesn't make it go faster uh, uh, digital platforms have seen an adoption by consumers and policy makers and enterprises of a kind that many things in economic history haven't and and i think that early success sort of drove people to say well you know we can put this on steroids we can we can make promises which we intend to keep but if we don't keep them it doesn't matter so i would say you you know platforms are fighting a complex multidimensional battle over time and just recognize that public policy is different from corporate strategy and public policy is the binding constraint here I think there is a five-year multi-pronged plan to raise credit to GDP ratio from 50%. I think China's 300% credit to GDP ratio is probably the wrong number, but MSME credit has been stuck at 20% of credit, agriculture credit has been stuck at 7-8% of credit. So we've had two recent committees at RBI one chaired by Ashok Gulati one chaired by Ashok uh, by UK Sinha on these two issues and we plan to sort of figure out how to get more banks, how to get uh, the governance of private sector banks raised how to get the governance of public sector banks raised how to raise our own game at regulation and supervision and how to reduce the barriers between banks and non banks so there are five ways in which we can consciously raise credit to gdp ratio and i think that there is a plan to do it now obviously entrepreneurship is an important part of this technology is an important part of this the data exhaust generated by aadhaar upi and everything else upi is currently a, lent, a payments platform it slowly hopefully will migrate or at least will give information to lenders so that they can take more borrowers or they can do cash flow based borrowing gst also is creating a data exhaust and infrastructure for cash flow based borrowing so i think it's the inevitable maturation of the financial system i wish we could do it faster i think there are now now that labor reform and agricultural rep- reform represent real ruptures with the past i'm hoping that um, you know we will have a real rupture and raising of ambition in our financial sector um reforms um i think they're on the table and i think um you should hear something over the next few months Two thousand four hundred sections and forty-four acts are being down brought down to four codes and four hundred sections. So, section is the unit that breeds compliances and regulatory cholesterol. So, I think a seventy percent reduction in sections is the right signal for states. I mean, a large part of this regulatory cholesterol is with states, and states need to take the lead. So, I think that the rules may some parts, some rules will come this month, some will come over the next six months. I think we all have to carefully watch the rules. but i think the tone from the top is clear they are not looking to replicate the old labor laws into the new labor codes so one where that reflected was in the actual structure of the laws that were passed but they obviously will be notified and there is also a clear willingness to decentralize you know 29 chief ministers matter more than one prime minister for job creation actually 200 mayors matter more so i think that states will now start uh, will not only start thinking about competing but they will also have the freedom to compete a large part of the labor codes gives um states the ability to set thresholds without going to their um local legislatures forget about going to delhi for permission So I think China's genius wasn't some Ayatollah in Beijing issuing fatwas it was um mayors competing for investment so I think that yes we do have to watch the rules and we need to decentralize more and some states will goof it up but some states will get it right so I think that the battle for ideas in policy reform or advocacy is never over right i mean there is no end point we can always get a little bit that the tone from the top that the codes have set is the right one i think the way the rules are being drafted is the right spirit but obviously we have to watch it but you know that's that's true for anything
I mean, I think that the dose makes the poison, as you know, Renaissance physician Paracelsus used to say. See, anything powerful enough to help has the power to hurt. Um, labor law reform does not mean no labor laws, and um, at some point, all kinds of work will have to decide whether work involves office, not necessarily. Whether work involves an employment contract, not necessarily. But is there? What is the relationship between the provider of work, the doer of work, and the consumer of work? You know, there's almost a tripartite relationship here. Now, what is the tripartite relationship? Has been debated through human history. I mean, 40% of um, Akbar's army was on tempo contract, um, or gig workers, or mercenaries, or freelancers. So I think through history we have um, debated whether it's better to have people working directly for you, whether it's people to be freelancing, whether it's people to be um, or consultants. So I think the diversity in the various kinds of work contracts has increased. But this has also increased in parallel with an expectation of a modern state being a welfare state. Now, I think the only social security we can offer, afford is massive job creation. If you were to give social security to half of India's population below poverty, we would wipe out tax receipts. So I, so I think that in reality, the notion that we will have taxpayer funded defined benefit index linked social security like US Germany is happens is probably not going to happen at this stage of our development. And in fact, Today's labor reforms are being done because of premature load bearing on the Indian economy in the 1950s or 60s when labor laws were written as if we are a 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar per capita income. So India is maybe fifth in the world in total GDP, but we're 138th in the world in per capita GDP. So social security cannot be inherited. It has to be earned. And so we need more resources. I mean, the central government has 29 lakh crores budget last year. All states have a 35, 34 lakh crore total budget. And about 80, 85 percent of that is already confiscated. So whenever people talk about Social Security, I also request them to do the math on the size of India's population, what would be the income that we would have and where would we find the money. So I think the only Social Security India can afford is job creation and platform um economy or gig workers use platforms to create work for them. Now, India has, in its new social security, taken a defined contribution plan, not a defined benefit plan. It has not linked those um, contributions to the employer or to the gig platform. It's linked it to the employee. So I think there's been a lot of learning in social security in the 21st century about not making it taxpayer funded, not making it defined benefit, not making it index linked, linking it to the employee. And I think all those learnings Earnings have been built into the social security code. So yes, India is taking the lead, but you don't have to be Western to be modern.